Bertram Etheridge is a director of business and legal affairs from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He likes Arcade Island X with a working arcade. Tiffany, this place is great. You can play arcade games, win tickets, collect prizes, vibe with friends, and explore the island in an awesome social extravaganza. It is almost like visiting Dave and Buster's, Round 1, or Chuck E. Cheese. You can play arcade games, you can win tickets, you can collect prizes, you can vibe hang out with friends, and you can role play on the island. Thanks for the Arcade Island X information, Bertram. You're welcome, I appreciate it. Kayla Alley is an advertising and promotions manager and user experience designer from Denver, Colorado. She is also an urban downhill racer in Bogota, Colombia, along with other cities and countries in South America and Latin America, as well as Mexico. But you can also do that activity with that BMX anywhere else. Tiffany, downhill mountain biking is a genre of mountain biking practiced on steep, rough terrain that often features jumps, drops, rock gardens and other obstacles. Jumps can be up to and including 12 meters or 39 feet, and drops can be greater than 3 meters, or 10 feet. The rider commonly travels to the point of descent a ski lift or automobile, since the weight of the downhill mountain bike often precludes any serious climbing. In this context, the use of a motorized vehicle or device does not make DH a motorized sport. And, riders must possess a unique combination of total body strength, aerobic and anaerobic fitness and the acceptance of a relatively high risk of incurring serious permanent injuries. Downhill bikes are heavier and stronger than other mountain bikes and feature front and rear suspension with over 8 inches, or 20 centimeters, of travel, to glide quickly over rocks and tree roots. In competitive races, a continuous course is defined on each side by a strip of tape, depending on the format. Riders have a single or double attempt to reach the finish line as fast as possible, while remaining between the two tapes designating the course. Riders must choose their line by compromising between the shortest possible line and the line that can be traveled at the highest speed. If a rider leaves the course by crossing or breaking the tape they must return to the course at the point of exit, unless they do not gain a time advantage from crossing the tape in which case they can continue with their run. Finally, riders start at intervals, often seated from slowest to fastest, and courses typically take two to five minutes to complete with winning margins being often less than a second. Riders are timed with equipment similar to that used in downhill skiing. I am an urban downhill mountain biking expert. I never fail nor give up but I don't suffer any permanent injuries that prevent me from being on the show in the first place, Tiffany. Well, Kayla, thank you for sharing your downhill biking experiences. I appreciate it. All right, last but not least, we have Alexis Stonebridge, a supermodel from Bentonville, Arkansas and reigning 65-day champion. But ever since the start of the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, you continue to support the country, and by country, I really mean Ukraine. Do you mean the blue and yellow flag? Yes, Tiffany, I do mean the blue and yellow flag. Although NATO and the EU have taken a strict policy of no boots on the ground in support against the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Ukraine has actively sought volunteers from other countries. On March 1st, Ukraine temporarily lifted visa requirements for foreign volunteers who wished to join the fight against Russian forces. He move came after Zelensky created the International Legion of Territorial Defense of Ukraine and called on volunteers to join the defense of Ukraine, Europe and the world. Uh -huh. Ukraine's foreign minister Dmytro Kuleba stated that as of March 6, approximately 20,000 foreign nationals from 52 countries have volunteered to fight. Most of these volunteers joined the newly created International Legion of Territorial Defense of Ukraine. On March 3, Russian Defense Ministry spokesman Igor Konashenkov warned that mercenaries are not entitled to protection under the Geneva Conventions, and captured foreign fighters would not be considered prisoners of war, but prosecuted as criminals. And why is that? Shortly thereafter, however, on March 11, Moscow announced that 16,000 volunteers from the Middle East were ready to join other pro-Russian foreign fighters alongside the Donbass separatists. 
a video uploaded online showed armed Central African paramilitaries calling to arms to fight in Ukraine with Russian troops. And that's how I donate money to support Ukraine during that Russian invasion of that country. I came on that show for a reason, Tiffany. Well, Alexei, that is the reason to come on the show is because Russia is fighting Ukraine right now, and we've already done a category regarding that country, and you blew through that category like a hot knife through butter on the other Talesandian Gardens trivia episode. Okay, since Bertram has 900 right now, you are in control of the board. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.